Hello, my name is Christian Gregg with Interlogix IFS. Today I'll be going over our new Power Over Coax Network Switch Line from IFS. This product allows you to convert your old CCTV system to IP without running new cable. Okay, we wanted to give you a visual overview of how a legacy DVR system is replaced uh, with an IP system today and how we're going to be able to do it with uh, this new POC technology. So the first slide here depicts uh, your existing DVR uh, infrastructure out in the field and uh, you know obviously they're getting to the end of the life cycle, products are failing, the image quality is poor, so we want to move to IP. Okay, first I want to show you how a typical DVR system retrofit to IP has been done. So the first thing we need to do is remove the analog hardware and obviously that starts with removing the analog cameras and replacing them with IP cameras. We're going to remove the old DVR and then we're going to remediate the old cabling. This third step is really uh, something that a lot of people don't really think of when they're doing a retrofit to IP and there obviously is a cost associated to removing all this existing coax cable that is in your facility and it could be a major cost if you have to utilize union labor. Okay the next step is to uh, build your network and obviously with that you have to design your network topology. So you have your IDF and your MDF rooms in a facility. The MDF uh, for the layman is the server room and the IDF closets can be what a lot of times we call telephone closets or network closets uh, in and around the facility. Uh, so first thing we need to do is install our new network hardware in those different locations. We're going to install the new category uh, cabling from the camera to the IDF closet and the switch and then your uplinks from the switch will go back to your server room switch here. Might install some new cameras possibly and then you're going to install your network video recorder connect program and test. Okay now I'm going to show you how we can accomplish the same thing using the existing cable that is out in the field using the IFS power over coax manage switch. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace the analog cameras with IP cameras. We're going to remove the old DVR. We're going to install the IFS POC series system. We're going to install the network video recorder. And we're going to connect in programming test. Okay, before I jump into the technical specifications on the POC products, I also wanted to give you uh, one more example for those large campus or multi-site enterprise uh, coax retrofits. Now I still run into a lot of these types of projects out in the field because nobody has really came to this customer base and let them know that there's an economical way to uh, move forward with an IP solution. As you can see here, and this is normally in the command and control center, uh, there's usually several racks of old fiber gear, uh, analog fiber gear uh, coming into the racks. There's matrix switchers. Then you have the old, say like a Winstead rack sitting here with uh, with uh, officers behind it looking at old CRT analog monitors with their keyboard controllers and uh, it's uh, pretty kludgy. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to want to remove all that old equipment here. 
We're going to install the new IP cameras, NVRs, and IP, the, the IFS coax network system. Then we have our NVR console that's going to easily uh, come off of here with our, with our uh, server. And we obviously simplify the uh, large system replacement. We've kept all the coax in all of these buildings in place. We've only replaced the obsolete hardware and we've utilized a fraction of the uh, fiber optic cabling that is, uh, that is coming on this fiber optic backbone. So going back to your end user or if you are an end user, uh, being able to reutilize probably 80 to 90 percent of that fiber optic cabling that is in that backbone for, for another purpose is obviously uh, advantageous. You've got your complete standalone network uh, in place here for your IP uh, cameras and you know obviously this is a big deal when you're talking about enterprise systems because going to an IT department and asking them for 300 IP addresses on their and a, a separate subnet for their IP video solution a lot of times uh, the IT department's just gonna shake their head at you and say not a chance but this is a complete standalone network uh, bringing all this video back uh, to your head end location. Obviously it greatly reduces the labor costs because we do not have to uh, either remove all that uh, RG59 uh, coax infrastructure and we do not have to have switches all over these buildings at the IDF closets that I mentioned earlier. And it greatly reduces the necessary equipment and you recover all that valuable closet space. In the old example that I had there, you're probably looking at upwards of at least two racks. Some of you out there might have three or four racks uh, solely dedicated to uh, the security system. Uh, once we do this retrofit, uh, you could easily get this done in a half a rack or, or one rack. And as I mentioned before, you provide a fully managed and secure network. All those video consoles can be coming directly off of your your client server now. You could create a video wall that goes right off of this. Much more elegant. Okay, now I'm going to be going over the technical uh, specifications of the uh, POEC system. And as you can see here, uh, we really have just five parts uh, that may or may not be needed to do one of these uh, implementations. Uh, the first two are over here to the left and it is a 8 channel or a 16 channel POC managed switch and then to the right here which I call the camera end piece uh, this piece will take a, a cat5 in the side as you saw in my earlier video snap the coax in and this is the, the uh, transmitter out in the field and then the last two final pieces you have the uh, the receiver end single channel if you're just doing a one-off at a site and that receiver end will need a power supply and these uh, managed switches at the head end uh, one thing that I I did not mention earlier by showing you some of the slides in the field uh, some of you may be wondering uh, how are we going to power these cameras well the uh, switch itself actually gives you uh, up to PoE plus power uh, per port on, on the switch basically where we're sending power from this switch over the the RG59 uh, coax uh, out to the field to this transmitter now it is sending enough power out out in the field to both power the transmitter itself and the camera connected to it the switches also contain uh, four giggy uplinks uh, they are there's two copper and uh, two SFP for fiber uplinks and these are not shared so you have up to uh, four gigs uplink on on the switch fabric itself finally here are a few of the other uh, features that the uh, coax cable network switches uh, uh, do have uh, the first is the uh, PDA live check feature and this is already built into our our managed switches our, our copper switches that we have uh, in the product line today and basically what PDA live checking does is it is a way that uh, we can ping the camera that is 
that is associated to the port on the on the switch and if we do not receive a response from that camera after a couple of tries it will actually reboot the offline device by powering down the port and uh, rebooting the camera in the field. The switch is a true layer 2 plus switch so as you can see it has many of the features that a standard uh, uh, Cat5 uh, switch will give you. And this is this last piece here is just kind of giving you a general idea of what happens as uh, the coax uh, the, the, the coax run gets longer and longer. As you can see here, up to 330 feet, uh, we're giving you almost uh, 100 megabits of data on that coax line, and we're giving you up to uh, 24 watts of power at at the camera end. Uh, as we get further away, uh, this is a 2,000 foot run on RG59. We're obviously uh, cutting down on the bandwidth uh, that we can that we can we can give you at the head end. But keep in mind, a 3 megapixel camera running at 7.5 frames a second is going to give you about, uh, you know, between 5 and 8 megabits of data. So there is plenty of data there uh, uh, to send your video back to a head end. And then, as you can see, uh, your power starts to diminish as the uh, wire runs get longer. So you definitely need to make sure that you're checking uh, what the wattage of the the uh, end device is. Most fixed IP cameras that are that are uh, installed in the field today can range anywhere from say 3 or 4 watts to uh, 12 watts if there's infrared illuminators uh, in the camera or if the camera is utilizing a heater uh, that's where you have to be uh, very careful about wattage recommendation is is to look at the data sheet of the of the camera that you want to install and it'll give you the information you need uh, to make sure that you're going to have adequate power at the head end but also keep in mind most of these installs there was an 18.2 uh, power line running to that analog camera as well so if you are in a pinch you can still use the 18.2 that is out there that concludes my YouTube on the coax network switch. Uh, special thanks to Ed Carter for putting the, together the PowerPoint for me and uh, thank you for watching my YouTube video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a great day.